Well, people, when I review bad movies, I review the ones that Satan would torture me with when I inevitably go to hell. And what better movie to torture me with than Woodchipper Massacre, a Z-grade annoying bore fest that will plague my dreams for years and years to come. And who do I have to thank for enlightening me to this wonderful piece of celluloid? The Cinema Snob. First criminally insane too, and now this? You know what, Snob? I'm tired of you making me watch these shitty movies. I'm going to get my revenge. I'm going to take that lovely mop off your head once and for all. Now, granted, your reviews tell me not to watch these shitty movies, but that just makes me want to watch them even more. So I'll see you soon, Snob. All right, Snob, this is it. Last time, your hair is mine. I'm going home now. The image, it will plague my dreams for years and years to come. But not quite as much as this dog trip that calls itself a movie. Woodchipper Massacre. Oh, sure, it looks like a movie, and it sounds like a movie. Oh, no, wait, let me rephrase. It looks like a home movie, and sounds like a home movie. It probably was a home movie. The story follows three misfit brats. Who are they? Well, there is John, played by John McBride, who also directed and wrote this. He does have some talent as the writer, as there are a few clever, humorous moments, although the characters are lame and the story is flat-out horrendous. Directing-wise, I'd say he sucks, but to be fair, he does what he can with the $400 he was given, and no, I'm not exaggerating, that's apparently how much this cost. So I can't accurately judge his directing skills based on this. As an actor, he varies. Sometimes he's not bad, other times, well, he is. Wow, this is really a bummer. There is Tom, the youngest of the lot. Well, look at it. All I know is that this brings new meaning to when the cinema snob said, Let's talk about some of the acting, because it's not really acting, much in the way that having a seizure isn't really dancing. Then we have Denise. Oh, lovely Denise. Let's just say that even the actress acknowledges how horrible she was and leave it at that. Although I'm pretty sure I'm hearing her shrill voice in my sleep. Oh, I'm so glad this week is over. Susie Richards did nothing but make a fool out of Their dad is going on a business trip, although I personally think that he just doesn't want to be in this movie. Boy, look, I'm sorry I can't be around this weekend to give you a hand, but I just can't get out of this business trip. Besides, I know I can count on you to keep things running smoothly. Yeah, sure. Listen, don't worry about anything. It's just for the weekend. Besides, what could happen? <laughs> you have no idea, my friend. No idea whatsoever. And remember the exciting Lucio Fulci driving and cat in the brain? That has nothing on this riveting backing out of the driveway bit that goes on for about 45 seconds. Oh, it's just so exciting. The car scenes in French Connection have nothing on this. The problem is that during this time, if you shot your movie on video, it's very difficult to edit. The result is that they must insert lots of filler, and this takes up way too much time. So you're going to see Tom walk all the way to his mailbox, fail to open said mailbox, find nothing in the mailbox, and walk home. I know, it's exciting, isn't it? Betty leaves Aunt Tess to watch them, and they must put up with her bitchiness, although she annoys me much less than they do. Yeah, that's what they all say. That's the trouble with this country today. People watch this trash, makes them crazy. Indeed. When Tom comes home with a Rambo hunting knife that he just got in the mail, Aunt Tess tries to take it away and he accidentally stabs her. So they decide to use chainsaws to dismember her, then throw her body parts in the wood chipper. Now you might ask yourself, what kind of irresponsible father would allow this evil aunt around his kids? Or even more so, what kind of irresponsible parent would allow their 13-year-old son to carry that kind of deadly weapon? Do not panic. It just means you're still sane. Yeah, I'm just calling to let you know that this movie sucks, and if you don't stop it now, I'm going to come to your house and kill you all. <laughs> it could be better. Um, how are you? It could be better. And yeah, I'm pissed, but thank you for asking. Well, the truth of the matter is, she's just dead. Yeah, this movie is pretty much dead. Oh, just a few minutes. 
more like a few hours. Look, is the guy who wrote and directed this movie there? John? See you! But whatever, I, I, I'm gonna hang up. My last warning is you better make this movie get better, or I am gonna come over there. And you do not want that. <laughs> Bye, Daddy! Oh, wow! Ah! Hello! I said get back up! Later on, Aunt Tessa's son, the real protagonist of this movie, comes to rescue us from the tyranny of these kids. Unfortunately, he ends up getting tossed into the wood chipper. Ouch, a real downer ending there. Oh, but that isn't the end of the movie. Now it's time to bring out the big guns, the heavy suspense. Like, will they finish mowing the lawn in time before their dad comes home? Yeah, this is actually the closest thing the movie even got to suspense, and that has to be an all-time low. So Wood Chipper Massacre is that rare combination of boring and annoying. You want to throttle all the characters, but most importantly, you just want it to end. And with a violent title of this, there should be some blood. There is very little to no blood in this movie. Yet yeah, I've seen more blood on used tampons. Ew. But I have to admit, it has a cult following, and I could see why. Sometimes it's so bad it's good, sometimes I even liked its dark sense of humor. If it had a budget, maybe it could have been okay. But it didn't, and this is what we got. And it's God compared to Crazy Fat Ethel 2. You know what, Woodchip Bear Massacre? Just for that, I'm not going to stab you. Granted, the fact that you're a Netflix movie and I do not own you probably has a lot to do with that. But, whatever. Unfortunately for you, Crazy Fat Ethel 2, I do own you. And you're going to have to be this movie's Sin Eater. My name is Marshall Hora, and my motto is if you're going to have cinematic diarrhea, then at least have the decency to wipe. <laughs>